Well, the ATF rule of uh, regulating 80% lower receivers and frames, it's back in effect after Friday. U.S. Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito temporarily paused a lower court's ruling in validating the Biden administration's restriction on these homemade firearms. Uh, Biden administration wants to call them ghost guns, but really they're just firearms that are made at home. But uh, what happened was, of course, uh, several weeks ago, you had a lower court say, hey, you, you can't just have the ATF create a rule like this. This has to be something that goes through Congress if it's even uh, constitutional. Uh, But you've got uh, the ATF under the Biden administration just making a rule up that's essentially lumped in a piece of metal as something that could be turned into an operable firearm in short order. Uh, and the frames and receivers issue uh, still very much alive in the courts. As after a lower court said you can't do this ATF, federal governments went to the Supreme Court to seek a stay of sorts to essentially put that ruling on hold. And that's what Samuel Alito did on Friday, putting a temporary pause which uh, actually is only going to last until August 4th. Uh, That's because, you know, typically when you have um, a policy that's in place that gets overturned in the lower court, there there could be some exigent circumstances of sorts that might require that 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 rule be put back into effect until more litigation happens with the appeals and so on. So that may be the thinking here. But uh, Alito issuing that administrative stay only until 5 p.m. August 4th, and he also gives the gun owners, manufacturers, and firearm advocacy groups uh, the ability to file their response to that uh, request for a stay by Wednesday. So uh, interesting to see this all play out in just a a handful of days here uh, from the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, and that's after the Biden administration asked the U.S. Supreme Court to step in on uh, Thursday to have that stay in, in place. It's interesting because we saw something very similar with the case out of uh, uh, Naperville challenging Illinois' gun and magazine ban. If you recall, Law Weapons, Robert Beavis, uh, the owner of Law Weapons, he sued last year before uh, Illinois implemented its gun and magazine ban. He sued the city of Naperville for their gun and magazine ban. And uh, then once Illinois enacted its statewide gun and magazine ban, Beavis wrapped in the state uh, law and challenging that with his challenge against Naperville. So the case was in the Northern District and the district judge sided with Naperville, sided with the state. And then Beavis went to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals and requested that there be a preliminary injunction while the appeal plays out. The appeals court denied that, siding with uh, Naperville and the state of Illinois. And then Beavis and his attorneys, they went right to the U.S. Supreme Court to try to get a emergency injunction while the case plays out. And if you recall... That was taken up by Justice Amy Coney Barrett. Justice Amy Coney Barrett taking it up signaled that the U.S. Supreme Court's very interested in this case. And uh, we were waiting for some kind of indication of what Amy Coney Barrett would do if she would uh, grant an emergency injunction while the case plays out in the appeals court. Uh, or would she deny that? Uh, and then you had all the happenings of the Southern District cases getting consolidated in the Northern District cases with the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals challenging Illinois' gun and magazine ban. And apparently that being on a uh, advanced docket, uh, a, a, a the rocket docket, so to speak, uh, that signaled to the U.S. Supreme Court that the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals was indeed uh, working on this issue in an expedited fashion. Well, we're still waiting for any kind of ruling from the uh, Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, but because they had that expedited hearing, the U.S. Supreme Court denied Beavis's motion to have a, an emergency injunction while the appeal plays out. So uh, it kind of shows you, in a way, how the um, uh, ATF coming in to request emergency action from the Supreme Court uh, in the in the lowers and the receivers and the frames rule that was blocked. Uh, We saw something similar with the the Beavis case. So we're all getting a lesson here. We're all getting an advanced lesson in how these cases 
move and the trajectory of these cases and how they can uh, change rather rapidly, quickly, but yet not quick enough for a lot of people. Stay tuned. We've got tons more coming up. From the Fly SPI Studios, take the